This is Life and Mission, a podcast to help you integrate daily life with a larger purpose. I'm Kay Helm, and I truly believe that we all have gifts, talents, and something of significant to contribute to the world. This week, I'm talking to Matt Hamm, co-founder of Uprint. Okay, so I'm here with my friend Matt Ham. Matt was on the earlier podcast. Um, gee, it's been a year and a half, maybe two years since we talked on the air. So let's catch up. What have you been up to, Matt? You know, Kay, don't remind me of how fast time goes by because <laughs> just here at Christmas, I was like, what was that Christmas like? That was Christmas two years ago. You know, we were talking about what our kids got or whatever. And I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, I can't even keep up with this. But yeah, it has been, uh, it's always, you know, great to connect with you and chat. But yeah, it's been, um, wow, it's been a really wild um, couple of years. I don't know exactly when we talked, but the gist of it is I left a, you know, 10 year uh, career in insurance sales to mm -hmm. start up our organization, Uprint, uh, which is a faith and personal development organization, as well as our nonprofit initiative, our ministry, which is called the Life Center. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's so funny because you, I think anytime someone's pursuing their call or, or stepping into something new, uh, unfortunately, we place our own understanding and expectations on how things should work out. Mm -hmm. And it never works out that way. True. And I think one of the greatest mistakes that we make is um, limiting God by our own understanding. And in the way we teach it at Uprint is it's, it's an indirect way. You're actually saying that you are smarter than God, or in fact, more merciful than him. When you start to go, well, if this happens, then that, or because this didn't happen, that whole thing. And so anyway, it has been, uh, it's been a year of lessons learned and a year of growth and I'm grateful for it and feel very prepared and encouraged about where we are and, and where the Lord's leading. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about you print and what you're doing there and, the, and you just opened the life center, right? So yeah, tell us what's going on. So um, Uprint is uh, co-founded by myself and Kevin Adams. Uh, Kevin is uh, older, as I say, older in, uh, than I am, wiser than I am, um, but he also likes to be behind the scenes uh, more than I do. So um, it kind of functions in a really cool capacity. Kevin uh, operates in most of our one-to-one -one mentoring and the majority of our content creation. And I kind of play the role of um, evangelist and uh, facilitator connector, not evangelist in the sense of slinging Bibles at people, but more of like just the, the spirited guy on top of the roof, waving your hand saying, Hey, come on in. And Kevin's inside, you know, baking cakes or whatever. And so <laughs> it's, it's really interesting because the Lord brought us together in such a miraculous way. Kevin was in Franklin, Tennessee. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina. He's 53. He'd been published by Zondervan, um, you know, living this crazy journey of faith where he's about to be evicted from his home um, because he was about to foreclose on his home, uh, just living by faith, watching God work. And, and God was moving him to Wilmington, North Carolina, which is where I was born and raised. And we were connected by multiple people just before that and, and realized that he would be moving here. And, and God did uh, get him here faithfully. And we began to connect. And, and really what it was birthed from is this, Kay. Uprint is a content distribution and publishing organization. So what we do is provide content, resources, and services to both individuals and corporations with the mindset of helping them kind of uncover that, that why, that purpose, mm -hmm. and then kind of helping them thrive in their gift set, really um, not only understanding or discovering who they are, but then developing um, the gifts that God has already placed inside of them. And then, you know, providing a, a way and a format for them to be able to live that life of impact. You know, it's funny, we actually had someone recently kind of speak a prophetic type vision over what we do. And he gave us two pictures. One was of a launching pad for rockets. And he said, you know, I see you guys as an organization where there's all these rockets that people have. And what you do is you help um, kind of ignite those rockets and launch them into the world. He said, secondarily, you're kind of like an eagle 
bird's nest and that you're the eagles kind of protecting the hatchlings and teaching the baby eagles how to fly, if you will. And it's not a rebuke or a condemnation on someone being a baby or, but you know, so many people have an idea of what it is that God's placed inside of them, but they don't quite understand how to develop that idea, yeah. how to uh, perfect or foster that idea, how to compile that idea uh, with action and with their gift sets to actually go live that out in the world. And then once they have that thing, the connections necessary to kind of give that idea of footing. And so, you know, this stems from Kevin and I both have been Christians, if you will, for many years and, you know, grown up in the church in various ways, mm -hmm. but became a bit, um, saw that in many cases, uh, churches were struggling with discipleship. And when it came specifically to business and entrepreneurism and innovation, that a lot of times the Christian faith, people shy away from that. Yeah. And instead of shying away from it, we wanted to foster people's genius and really help birth it into the world in a between Sundays fashion. So it's kind of like go wherever you want to go to church, but life is lived between Sundays. So we get busy with helping people in that, in that capacity. What does that look like when you're doing that? What's, what's the between Sundays look like? Yeah, it's, it's funny because it takes on many, many forms. So um, most of the time people come to us out of two, two things. One is hunger, uh, which is more rare. And it's somebody going, I am not getting everything that my heart desires in my current environment, whether that's personal development books. And, you know, we kind of jokingly say the gurus and all that stuff. It's like, yeah. I've read every personal development book in the last 15 years, but I'm still missing something, right? There's still a hunger or, Hey, I've gone to church every Sunday and Wednesday night or whatever. I've been in the church for years, but I'm still hungry for more than what I'm getting. So hunger is one thing that drives folks, you know, kind of toward us that are hungering for more. However, that's rare. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time people come to us because they're hurt because, They've been hurt by a relationship or they're in financial stress or they're in some type of personal pain of rejection, um, you know, addictions, all, all kinds of stuff. And it's not necessarily, it's crazy. It's not like people that you wouldn't think are struggling with those things are in fact struggling with those things. Yeah. You know, the, the divorce rate, um, addiction rate, you know, the opioid crisis, um, all of these things, people's pain from their childhood. I mean, so many people are medicating uh, their problems with the worldly things, whether it's trying to earn more money or whether it's, you know, taking some type of drug or alcohol dependency, um, whether it could be pornography, it could be, you know, Netflix binging, whatever it is. So many people, um, they're trying to anesthetize their pain with worldly things. And even sometimes with religious things, mm -hmm. because we see a great spirit of religion on so many people where it's about obedience and behavior and performance, which is not Jesus, never was Jesus. And so we help remove kind of the scales from folks' eyes and detach them from this worldly dependence on um you know, religion or these different things as a way to medicate and really get to the heart of what is the stronghold or struggle in your heart and how can we help heal that thing? So instead of putting a band aid, you know, on a cancer diagnosis, we actually go in and eradicate the cancer cells by infusing it with light and truth and hope and encouragement and letting the supernatural power of God and the Holy Spirit foster and take root and work in people's lives. And so, you know, we call it biblical counseling sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, we call it executive coaching sometimes because there's some folks who just need a, a faith-based, you know, biblical mindset as to how they grow their business and operate their day-to-day. Um, and then we call it faith development, which is kind of this, you know, cool combination of uh, discipleship and personal development that, um, so we kind of stand in that gap, you know, I don't know if that directly answered the question, but that's kind of the, the 10,000 foot view of what we do. Yeah. I'm looking at, uh, at the Uprint website, uh, uprint.life. And, um, uh, so you've got a page here that kind of lists out some things that people can yeah. Can focus on, you've got personal mentoring, um, things like learning how God designed you, um, learning to navigate by faith. And then you've got the executive coaching and several things under that and biblical counseling. 
And, and these are all issues under here, overcoming, you know, was it understanding the three big fears, you know, learning to rest. That's yes. a huge one. I hear so many people talking about that. Um, and it's just, like you said, it's life. It's how do I live my life? Amen. Good people, you know, it's everyday stuff. Um, you guys have, um, as you're help, as you're helping people in this between Sundays, living life, kind of mentoring, coaching, counseling process, mm-hmm. um, you've developed some, some, I think some pretty unique things that you guys are doing. I know for yeah. me, I get a text from you every morning. Yeah. It's just super encouraging. And it's, it takes all of five seconds to look at that. Yes. But, but it really helps me first thing when I get up to have a great attitude for the yeah. day. And, and I'm not talking just kind of the usual platitudes that people yeah. fling out on Instagram and social media. These are, some of these are really, really make you think and you can chew on it all day, all week. Yeah. It's, it's great. You know, so the, the, the picture that, that Kevin, and, th- and that's Kevin's genius, right? Mm-hmm. So Kevin, he is a wordsmith. He is a writer. In fact, that's what God has anointed him to do, writing with the combination of mentoring. So Kevin is a mentor at heart, and he uses writing as a form of communication. Mm-hmm. That's a gift set of his, um, and, and drawing the gold out of people and forcing people to pause long enough to think. And it's so funny because a lot of times folks will go, ah, it's too deep, and they'll just run away real quickly. Yeah. But but the, it's it's intentional because anything transformative is slow and deep. Yes. We live in a fast and shallow world that is dominated by the spirits of the air, right? But God is slow and deep and deep calls to deep. Mm-hmm. And so the picture that Kevin had is like sometimes you can't give someone a slab of beef. You've got to break up meat, right? The meat of the word into small bite-sized pieces. And so when you think about discipleship, this is the interesting piece that we feel like we're bringing in an innovative way to the body of Christ, to the church. And interestingly enough, the institutional church, um, you know, they, they, they still are standing on the sidelines kind of like, what are you guys doing? What are y'all about? And all that kind of stuff. You know, there's all these kind of interesting things that God's doing, but the fruit is being born because discipleship happens in relationship and in community. And so what we have done is put together kind of a process if you will, because we need processes. People hate that word, but the truth is we need processes and structures and organization. So discipleship happens in relationships. So we send out a daily text to our community members that is a powerful thought. We encourage you to spend a few minutes in reflection on that throughout the day and let the Lord give you space to speak. So that is a daily nugget of boom, 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 boom. And it's kind of digestible versions of mentoring. Well, then in combination with that, we offer one-to-one discipleship where we make it personal to you and we dive in and go, okay, um, what does this actually look like applied in your own life? Like, how is this taking form in your own life and relationships and struggles and mindsets and thought patterns and all these different types of things? Then through our uh, faith and business gatherings, we have a regular monthly gathering where we can get people together in kind of a corporate environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the only thing we don't have is a band and, you know, sing music, but we break bread, we fellowship. Um, there's teaching that's involved. There's communication um, and, and kind of iron sharpening iron. And then there's prayer. And it's been great um, for us to kind of see that and just understand um, what God is doing when you get a group of people together. And so that to me has been uh, really powerful. And then the, the final piece is smaller groups, right? Mm-hmm. And so the small groups is we're starting to go through some of our studies together, which is, um, you know, the spiritual cleanse or our identity course and some of these types of things. So it's been really awesome to see how the Lord has used it in multiple capacities. And so anyway, breaking that down, and I apologize for the ding in my computer here is for some some reason, like I'm trying, trying to turn these notifications off. I apologize. So everybody's jumping in their car. What? Who's who's texting me? That's good though. You know, you've got it. You're hitting it from different levels, and I think that's one of the things we have to do in this world. Like you said, it is a world of our phones dinging, our computers, or everything is clamoring for our attention. And so it's that much more important to be purposeful in uh, pursuing God and pursuing yes. community and, and healthy community. 
Well, you know, here, here's the thing with the, why we use digital technology um, is because we cannot avoid the fact that we are on our phones or in our devices in a constant capacity, you know? And, you know, it, it's funny to kind of really use what just happened there with the dinging of the computer as an example is we live in an environment where it's so easy to be distracted because information is coming at us at a light speed now, unlike it has ever come at us before. And the truth is, is people crave information mm-hmm. and they want more information, more information, more information. But what they really desire is transformation. And so transformation actually precedes good information. You know what I mean? Like you do need a little bit of information in order to be transformed, but it says in the word, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You've got to actually think differently in order to be transformed. And then you can utilize um, information properly. Otherwise it's just a stream of the latest information. And so one of the reasons why we intentionally go into text messaging is because with social media or with email or whatnot, it is just lost in the ether. But, you know, through text messaging, it's a bit more intimate to folks. And it feels like Jesus went into the villages, right? Mm-hmm. And he met people where they were. Well, right now we feel like the villages are literally the, the cell phones. Like that's where people are. So we're going into those places, meeting people where they are, giving them some nuggets. But here's the cool thing that we haven't even touched on yet is why would you do all of this? What's the purpose yeah. behind all of this for us? And it's not to make Matt and Kevin famous and popular and, you know, whatever. It's, it, it has zero to do with, you know, kind of celebrity Christian culture or making a bunch of money or whatever. It's to prove that you can start a business that is built on faith, by faith, and then you can use and leverage your life and business to pour into kingdom work. Yeah. And so the Uprint Life Center, as we refer to it as the Life Center, is literally the beneficiary of the work that we do. But as an organization itself, it utilizes the resources that the uh, Uprint business, you know, provides. And so it's a great kingdom-minded symbiotic organization, um, you know, or relationship between organizations where you've got this nonprofit ministry over here. That's a 501 C three with the government that is about removing the obstacles so that people can uncover their unique human potential. That's kind of the language we use. And, and what it amounts to is, listen, we believe that people absolutely need to know who Jesus is and they need to be saved, but beyond salvation, they need to get to know the father and they need to understand the, the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us and draws us into a sanctification process as sons and daughters. So, you know, what we do is, is walk people down that path. However, sometimes people just need a couch or they just need their mortgage paid or they just need groceries. And so, It's not like, well, you just need Jesus. Yeah, you need Jesus, but right now you need groceries. So I'm going to give you groceries and bless you um, in Jesus' name and remind you that God loves you and he cares about you and he desires genuine relationship with you and he created you for such a time as this and we're here to walk with you. So the, the, the philanthropic side of the, the life center is literally removing obstacles. Mm-hmm. And then the, the discipleship work is walking with people to help them uncover the gift set. But then the life center is actually you know, going to be a campus style facility where it will literally be a launch pad for entrepreneurial kingdom minded endeavors. And so it's, it's really just a, it's a vision from the Lord that we are faithfully following out and it's bearing fruit. Now we are focused on the work and we really just want to empower people to get along and on board with the mission. Cause we believe there will be life centers popping up in different areas of the country mm-hmm. and it'll just be a kingdom movement where we can begin to reclaim business and businesses for his purposes. I love it. And I, I want to, um, for people that have just popped into the podcast, you know, they're, they're looking at it. They said, Oh, you know, this, this is about calling and purpose and mission and all of that. I'm reading a book right now called the call. It's written by Oz Guinness. It's like a 20 something year old book, but what you were talking about, there's so much Jesus in what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. I just want to remind the folks listening that this is something that Oz Guinness says in the book. He says, there is no calling without the caller, yes, the one, the one who calls. Yes. And it's really, that's the foundation. And I really believe that if we're not building on that, 
yeah. foundation that there is one who calls, then everything else we do really is becomes an empty striving. You know, it's, it's so interesting because um, we say that we were created in God's image, like mm-hmm. popular Christian culture. Oh, we're yeah. created in God's image. I'm created in God's image. Do, do you believe that God created you? Yes, I do. Okay. Did God, does God make junk? No, no, he doesn't. So um, what does he make? Well, if he is God, he makes genius. You're created in his image. That means you have his DNA genius running through your veins. Mm -hmm. So when it says verses like delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. What does that actually mean? Well, so many people try to argue is that the heart is wicked and evil above all things, right? Okay, the Bible does say that. What is that talking about? That's talking about the initial condition of the heart when it is an unredeemed heart for the Lord. Mm-hmm. But that the heart or the spirit, right, is where those desires dwell that God placed in you. It's like seeds of his genius that he planted in your heart and you you feel them or perceive them through your desires. Mm-hmm. And so the, the the God asks you for this. He says, I will give you the desires of your heart in exchange for your will. Mm-hmm. You give me your will and I will give you the desires of your heart. That's it. That's the offer. That's the offer of faith. Delight yourself in the Lord. What does that mean? That means surrender your will, yield to him, trust in him, abide in him. You know, it, it's all throughout scripture. Who did this the best? Jesus. Yeah. He was our literal example. Yes, he's our savior. He's our Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King, but he was also our example. He was our brother. He was Jesus, my friend, you know, oh, my friend we have in Jesus. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it's interesting that God talks about himself in three relationships with human beings. One is that spouse, right? It's mm-hmm. the spouse right. kind of thing, right? And um, then it is children, father, son, children. So most intimate spouse, next intimate children. And the third, what is it? You're not now my servants, but my friends, right? Mm-hmm. That's Jesus's declaration. So we see modeled out in our relationship with the father, the three most intimate relationships we can have on the earth, our spouse, our kids, parent, child relationship, and then our friends. We have that in the father. Interesting. There are three parts to the Trinity dynamic, not getting into the theology of this, but you have Jesus, you have the Holy spirit. So if you go on a Trinity, that's deep. But yeah. But, but think about it. Yeah. You've got Jesus, you've got the father and you've got the Holy spirit. So yeah. what do you have there? You know, well, you've got the bride of Christ. Christ, right? That is the spousal relationship. You've got the father son relationship, and then you've got the friend of the Holy spirit. So, so it's not by accident that God has laid out this plan through his word and through his um, implanted word, and then given us as his people, the desires of the heart to uncover it. Mm -hmm. And so the bottom line is, is what are you busy with doing in your life? Are you busy with protecting and building your own reputation? Or are you more concerned and busy with living underneath the reputation of God and his provision and his literal desires to give you the desires of your heart so that you can change the world for his glory? Mm -hmm. That's why we do what we do. That's good. I want to circle back to something you said when you were describing the Life Center. Okay. And it goes back to that being created in the image of God. Okay. Um, because what I see is when somebody walks in and they need, you know, a stove or a couch yeah. or, or, or whatever, they, there's a need there. And it is a human in the moment need. And it looks like when they walk in with that need, what makes uh, you guys unique is that you're looking at the image of God in that person, you're really addressing that image of God and you're seeing the greatness in this person rather than just the need. You're meeting the need, but your focus seems to really be on that image of God and the potential and the calling and the creation. You're, you're looking at the bride of Christ. You're looking at friend. You're looking you know, at some, someone that is more than their current circumstance. You know, it's interesting. You use the word potential Mm -hmm. and people are the best investment that you can make, period. 
investing in people is the best investment that you can make. And what you're investing in is their potential because people are like seeds, right? You know, like our, our, you know, I always remember growing up, one of the John Maxwell kind of colloquialisms is, you know, your candle loses nothing when it lights another great imagery, right? The candle doesn't go out. It just spreads, you know, there's, there's no lack of, uh, of flame unless, it, you know, as long as there's something to burn. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's so interesting that that is this concept of, um, God is a consuming fire. And when we are completely consumed by him, then we become consuming to other people, not consumptive in, a, in an ugly way, but like you're, you can't help but spread that thing to another person. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you literally pour out God's spirit through your gift sets, it is what C.S. Lewis calls the good infection. It is infecting them with the love of Christ. And what you're doing is you're beginning to unlock the potential that they have from the one that created them. So you don't see circumstances or struggles or whatever, the enemy, the enemy is on people so much that they are completely shrouded and focused on who they are uh, not. Mm-hmm. You can never, fo- you can never understand who you are if you're constantly focused on who you're not. And so what you have to help people do is you have to help shock them almost into um, uh, anesthetizing. You know, you people pass out or whatnot, you wave the little thing in front of their nose and they kind of wake up, you know, they get knocked out in a football game. Like, and how do you do that? You do that by loving them. You do that by looking beyond, you know what I mean, the circumstance and seeing the potential in them. And that's what you tap into. And because that's what God did. I mean, that's what Jesus did. And it's interesting that, you know, Jesus, if you read the New Testament, Jesus encountered every single person in a different way. Yeah. He met the lowly, humble prostitute with grace and mercy and forgiveness because she was contrite and broken before him. But then you see moments where he looks at the disciples or even the Pharisees and he says, are you so dull or you whitewashed tombs? Like there is a, he's like, I am not going to stand for that arrogance inside of you. And that is so powerful for us because we in culture just sometimes become a doormat, you know, and Jesus was never a doormat. Um, One of the things Kevin says is he was a welcome sign, not a doormat. And so when people come in, you're not a doormat and don't let them run you over. You know what I mean? But you, you hold up a welcome sign, you set parameters and you treat them with gentleness, joyfulness, and firmness. And that is leadership like Jesus, gentle, joyful, firm. That's one of the three things that we teach on relationals. Um, but yeah, it, it's so that's what our culture desperately needs because so often it's like, Hey, I'll give you this under these conditions. Right. I'll give you this if you, and there are some situations where you don't want to give a heroin addict, you know, uh, a handful of cash. Right. But even the heroin addict needs to see Jesus. So what can you give that person, you know, and, and, and letting the Holy spirit be the guide, not some, you know, okay, person comes in the door. Here's our checklist. Okay. A, B, C, D. Hey, you know, you get this, you know, or it's like, that's one of the things I struggle with with church is you go to church, you get engaged and it's like, Hey, go volunteer in the kid's room. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not made for the kid's room. I have enough of those at my house. And if I'm going to volunteer, it's not going to be in that capacity, but we try to one size fits all our faith into a limitless and sizeless God. You know, and some of those gifts, um, and this is something uh, we talk about in my family a lot, the, the gifts that God gives us, the talents, the, the desires that he gives us and equips us for, sometimes we try to fit those into, like if it's a gift given from God, it has to be used in the church. Mm. One of the things that I love about what you guys are doing is the faith in business Mm-hmm. And how are we using these God-given gifts in business and not just for ourselves, but, you know, there's, there's sometimes a tension kind of in that, you know, you take those spiritual gifts, uh, anybody that's been in a church for any amount yeah. of time knows these spiritual gift tests. And they're so often, they're so geared towards what ministry in the church within the four walls of the church. Yes. Are you now going to volunteer? In? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think the first understanding there is that the church is not walled. 
Right. The church is not a building. And so we are the church. What is the church? The church is the body of believers, mm-hmm. right? So that is not confined to Sundays. It's not confined to buildings. Now, the difference is what we call captive or vocational ministry versus what I would call is secular ministry, right? And there is a distinguishing feature there. But that to me is, gosh, knows that's 50 years old. You know, and like here we are now in 2020 and the Lord is moving into a kingdom mindset where there are no walls. And the greatest evangelism that you can do is where God has placed you with the gifts he's given you. And so we have to become a people who are consumed by him. Right. He's the consuming fire. So we become kind of infectious to those around us. But that's not by preaching from our desk or inviting people to church, per se. I mean, that's fine. You want to invite them to church or whatever. It's about being the good news in their life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you want to live in such a way of excellence that points back to the father that people go, what? I, there's something about you that's incredibly different. And it's to, that you are consumed, completely consumed and yielded to and surrendered to the will of the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit. And yeah, God placed entrepreneurism in people and he wants to do people who are into uh, hair care and, and, and having their own salon or baking bread or, you know, selling insurance or being an attorney or, you know, manufacturing cars or banking or, you know, whatever it is like he needs, we need a people who are infused into those cultures and become little evangelists in those pockets. It's not just about, Oh, I've got to go and leave this to go and, you know, be a missionary overseas. Um, That is the call for many people, but God will clarify the call as you yield and surrender to him. And so it's, it's so often we get this culture perception is okay. Checkbox. I'm saved. Checkbox. I go on Wednesday night. Checkbox, I'm baking casserole. Checkbox, I'm, you know, done my spiritual gifts test. Uh, Checkbox, I've gone on a mission trip. Dang it, I'm still missing something here. Yeah, that's daggone right, because the Lord made you a, a human being on this earth who was to express him by creating art. And you're afraid to go create art because maybe it's a pastor, maybe it's your parents, or maybe it's somebody who's saying you're not going to be able to do it or you can't do it or whatnot. You're never going to find true fulfillment until you're living living from the anointing that God has given you. It's as distinct as your thumbprint, and that is your you print, as we call it, right? That's the thing you've got to figure out. And you got to go. And that is what fulfillment is about. And that is the process of discipleship is to get people to that place, because that is the most effective way to spread the kingdom. What are some practical things people can do today? They're, they're like, okay, something's burning in me. There's this desire. There's this call, if you will. What, what do I do? What do I do yeah. next? I think it starts with a posture of rest. It starts with stillness. We're not very good at that. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The offer of Jesus first is rest. You know, it's interesting that God was resting before he came out of rest to create the heavens and the earth. And then what did he do after that? He rested. You know, Um, Adam was created at rest. And then he said, go and, you know, uh, steward the, the, the creation I've given you. Mm -hmm. God created a natural cycle of rest within the seasons, within the days, within the, you know, it's just, it's everywhere. We start from rest. And so I would tell folks to get very still, get to a place of rest and begin to magnify and elevate the glory of God. He created you. He's your father. He put this stuff inside you. Learn to praise him. So stillness is one. Thankfulness is two. Because it says, be thankful in all things. He didn't say be thankful for all things. He said, be thankful in all things, right? And there's a difference. That means that a heart of praise and thankfulness can exist in the midst of all things. And that is what magnifies the glory of God, because that is a heart that is grateful, that is joyful, that is ready to receive the seeds that God wants to birth in you. And so it's a posture of stillness and rest 
then it's a posture of thankfulness. And that I believe is how people begin to birth. So that, that was a little bit high minded. I don't mean to be up in the clouds. I would say stillness, start each day with quiet time, with quiet space. Do not speak. Don't jump on your phone. Be quiet. It's not just about prayer to God to go, oh God, will you save me? Will you give me this? Will you forgive me? It's going, thank you, Father. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the breath today. Thank you for this home. Thank you for this job, even if I hate it, God, because it's an opportunity to be grateful. Father God, thank you for the feet that I have underneath me. Thank you for the breath in my lungs. Thank you, Father, for I praise your name among the heavens. Glorify and magnify God and then be quiet and meditate and listen back to what he's saying. And you, you hear that and see that through his word. You see it through people and relationships. And then have the faith to do what he says, even if it's something small, even if it's something crazy, like, oh my gosh, I really feel like I should call Kay today and just pray with her. You know, you go, oh, I don't want to interrupt her. I don't want to bother her. Or that's weird. Or what? No, I'm going to call her. I'm going to say, Kay, um, can I pray with you today? The Lord really put it on my heart because faith grows as you use it. Yes. And so, um, again, I, I, hopefully that's just some context for folks to, to be able to dive in. But um, I'm telling you, the life that God has created you to live is literally waiting on the other side of your capacity to be, re- be at rest, yield and surrender your will and listen to where the spirit leads and follow that. And that is what is anointed and blessed. Yeah. And I think it's the opposite of, of what we tend towards we don't tend towards rest. We tend towards what class do I need to take? What book do I need to read? What podcast do I listen to? What guru do I follow? Kind of we're in that age of gurus. I think. Yeah, if, but, if you have the mind of Christ, which is the word, you have literally limitless capacity inside of you. Yeah. So that is where you start there, you know, and then the gurus and all that kind of stuff, they, they can help reveal truth or bring truth. But I mean, he is the source of truth. He made the gurus. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so um, that's it. But I would tell folks, you know, Kay, I mean, not a plug for uh, like a, what we do, but I mean, that's why we created the portable faith community mm-hmm. is, is give people a nugget to meditate on each and every morning. And, you know, if someone's looking for something, yeah, come on, join us. I mean, it's like 10 bucks a month. It goes to the nonprofit work. We use that money to bless other people, but you get great content in the meantime, and it's a great place to start. And so that's literally what we do for folks who are going, I'm looking for something. I mean, there's where you can begin. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and you know, the things that you're, you're saying there about, about the rest and the gratitude, gratitude that goes, we were talking before we, we started recording about that book, The Call. Those are two things that uh, Os Guinness talks about in there, yeah. that there are perversions of the call that we get caught up into as we start in our limited understanding. We start running off after something without taking that time mm-hmm. and gratitude and rest are two of the things that we were designed to, to do, to have. Yes. And when we leave those behind, we get, skewed Mm -hmm. in our direction. And, you know, anybody that's ever built anything knows that if you're just a tiny, tiny degree off at the beginning, by the time you get to the end, yes, way off. Well, here, here's, here's a secondary thought on that. And I know we probably got to wrap up soon, but the, the opposite, what is rest? What is rest? It's not sitting on your couch. It's not sleeping. It is the absence of stress. Mm -hmm. That's all rest is. There is no stress. There's no stress. There's no striving. There's no effort. It is just utter peace. It's the absence of worry. Begin in a place of that rest. I'm at rest. There is no stress. There is only peace. That's what rest is. You can still be active. You can still be doing things, but you're coming from an internal perspective of rest. Then secondly, what what is the opposite of gratitude? The opposite of gratitude is entitlement. I deserve this. Yep. I deserve this. So when you are living from a place that says, I deserve this and I am stressed, you will not foster the purposes of God because you are living from entitlement and you are living from stress. And God cannot bless entitlement. He cannot bless stress. But if you come from a place of rest and you come from a place of gratitude, he can pour into that because it looks like him. Awesome. And that's what, that's what Jesus did. Let us go away. You know, let's, let's pull away and and spend that time. Thank you, Matt. 
Always, Kay. Thanks so much. And as always, if I can connect with anyone, if anybody wants to talk or whatnot, we do discovery calls as a part of a kind of initial um, thing. They can go on the site, like you said, and click off like what they're interested in. Um, and we'll set up a discovery call and walk through that with them. But again, it's uprint.life, Y-O-U-P-R-I-N-T dot L-I-F-E. But many thanks to you, friend, and continued heart for, for your work that you're doing to just be light and joy in the world. Thank you so much. All right. All right. See ya. That's it for this week on the Life and Mission podcast. Thanks for listening. Find your voice. Tell your story. Change the world. Change the world.